What is up, guys? It is the Sound Alchemist, and today I am joined by Gersh One once again to bring you guys another epic episode of One, Two, Three, Four: The Greater. Yeah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we we'll get to those questions first. That is what Parker Hart did. He asks, <laughs> "Are Logic Marines a real chapter? If so, what is their lineage?" Uh, the Logic Marines are um, a fan-made chapter, uh, and I believe their lineage, they say they come from the second Lost Primark. Who can relate? <laughs> uh, the Logic Marines is a, is, a, is a chapter that has been requested multiple times, usually whenever I do a uh, Angry Marines video, mm -hmm. they talk about the Logic Marines. Uh, if you read the Logic Marine lore, they are boring. <laughs> You're dealing with like 40k where it's supposed to be grim, dark, science, fantasy, and these guys are normal just soldiers. I, I would much <laughs> rather do Imperial Guard lore than, than do a, a Space Marine, Logic Marine lore. But yeah. I, I haven't really heard, or I haven't delved into the lore of them, but um, I like Logic the Rapper, so yes. <laughs> that's, an, that's an avenue to explore. Next question. Uh, this one is by Mad Max. If all the Necrons woke up from their sleep, how big of an army would they have? Since they used to control the galaxy, I'm guessing pretty big. Yeah, but at the same time, like they used to control the galaxy at their height of their power, and now they're not. <laughs> so even if they were all to wake up, yeah, it'd be a pretty massive and pretty scary army. Um, but I think... Because yeah. of the turbulence of the... The warp and everything that's going on. It would be hard for them to actually, like, uh, keep the dynasties together. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, they were really strong technologically. So by numbers, they didn't have as... They had a silver tide, but it was nowhere near as, like, the trillions of inhabitants of hive worlds and all that kind of stuff. Uh, or the orc green tide and stuff like that, right? Right. Algae eaters, basically. Basically. Fungus. The Fool 06. Do Space Marines listen to music? What kind of music? I know what the Logic Marines listen to. <laughs> Logic. Uh, they listen to Tenacious D. Specifically, um, Wonder Boy. Yeah, I feel like it's either that or it's like hymns. Like. Like, I love I love. Yeah. Estas son las mañanitas. There you go. That's how they wake up. It's their birthday every day. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one's by Francisco Viejo. Would the Tau be able to dissect a space marine to see what their gene seeds are? Would a Tau be able to dissect a what? A space marine and like kind of like tinker with the gene seed. Oh. The gene seed is specifically des or designed for the human body. Not even just like the human body, but like a male, male human body. Um, Those chromosomes. We did a 40 facts. Uh, check out our 40 facts on Tau space marines. Oh yeah, that's right. We play around with the theory of what if the Tau did manage to create space marines within the Tau casts. Um, so check it out. Mm -hmm. What do you think though? Uh, I feel like the ethereals wouldn't like that, so they probably wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Next uh, question is from Hugo Lopez. What Primark do you think you are most like? You know what? Upon reflecting on my past, as a, as a, like the actions of my past, I came to realize that I was actually the villain in most of, of my interactions with other people. Uh, <laughs> okay. I always saw myself as like the hero growing up, uh, but I think that's just like obvious everybody does. But l when I analyze all my friendships, I was like, oh shit, I was a really bad kid. <laughs> um, so I think I would be Lorgar, because I was like that. And now all you do is brood in your tower and you never go out. <laughs> yeah, it sounds about right. It's yeah. just amassing warp power. Basically. <laughs> Um, what about you? I'd probably go with Ferris Manus, because he's dead, and I'm dead inside. Ferris Manus is... Well, yeah. yeah he's, he's beheaded. Beheaded. Do you see yourself as technologically, like, um, <laughs> Not at inclined? all. Nope. No. Do you see yourself as, like, Necron technology? Nope. Nope. Okay. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> the next question. Uh, this one is by Fenrir. Which of the Warhammer fantasy races and factions, excluding the dwarves, dwarves, not drawers, would you like to see in 40k? For me, I would say the Tomb Kings, but they're kind of like Necrons. So maybe Lizard Men. Huh? So he's basically saying, from the Age of Sigmar and fantasy races, which ones would you like to see cross over into 40k? Oh, definitely Lizard Men. I want to see old ones. The Slam. The Slam. I think it'd be interesting to see the uh, Ideneth Deepkin, because it's an aquatic race. And for Forge World and GW, they really need to bust out aquatic races. Or the Sylvaneth, because of trees. Yeah. I, I, the reason that I went like this is because of aquatic, so I thought of like a fish flipping like that. Oh, I thought you were like the growing of trees. That too, I guess. Uh, next question comes from William Zeller. Do you think that the Cabal knew that the pylons would restrict the warp? If so, what are the odds of the Cabal restricting or resurrecting the Emperor now that the fall of Cadia has unfolded? Uh, Hold up. Yeah. Wait a minute. All right, go. If so, how do you see the war in hell unfolding between the Cabal, the Imperium, versus Chaos Undivided if the Cabal is, the, is in possession of the standard template constructs? Thank you. Thanks, guys. Your content is awesome. Ooh, that's a lot to unpack. So, um, so do we think that the Cabal knew about the pylons? Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. The Cabal knows so much that they've actually been in the Black Library. Mm -hmm. So they've 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 uh, seen the present, past, and future. Um, and then, are they going to resurrect the Emperor? No, I don't think that they would res resurrect the Emperor. They were trying to kill him. They're yeah. like to make them lose yeah. because that'd be better for the overall universe yep um and then what do we see the war in hell unfolding between the cabal plus the imperium versus the chaos undivided uh the cabal would want to destroy the imperium like like you said with the death of the emperor it would be well it, it's gonna hurt humanity yes but like the population of humans and emotions to feed chaos would decrease so chaos in turn would also decrease and thus the rest of the universe would prosper prosper yep good question though next question is from the big one if loads of nerds play this game and their moms drop them off somewhere to play then tell me how many of those moms are milfs you know what? When I go to the GW store, I've always seen the kids getting dropped off by dads. Hmm. I feel that it's one of those things where it's like divorced dads who, who have the kid for the weekend. If you, if you are one of these people or if you know you were one of these kids, um, haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, the but villain, <laughs> the villain, he's still the villain. He, I feel like they just drop him off. And they're like, you know, go do your thing. I'm going to go do my thing. I'll pick you up later. Don't tell your mom you were here the entire day. <laughs> and of course, the kid's not going to tell the parent because, you know, the kid's having fun at the Warhammer store. Because, uh, yeah. It must be tough for a GW employee um, when that stuff happens. I've noticed that. Because they're basically babysitting. Yeah, that, that sucks. Um, don't do that. <laughs> if, if you are... Um, uh, well, I mean, I guess you wouldn't be watching this. Yeah, you know, it just sucks. I sympathize for all the GW employees that are at the store and have to put up with that shit. So then, continuing on with this question, oh, how this? many of those dads are DILFs? All of them. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Next question comes from Mad Max. If you had to choose three new factions, which ones would they be? Xenos, Imperium, and Chaos. So one Xeno faction, one Imperial faction, and one Chaos faction. Um, it'd be aquatic all of them. <laughs> uh, I think a Xenos faction would be the polar bears from the Tau. Like the psychic ones that like are on psychic clouds or something. Are they called Nephilims? I don't know what they're called, but they always, I always, whenever I think of them, I think of the uh, Coca-Cola polar bears. Yeah. 
And then I get thirsty. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, for for my Xenos, uh, I think it would be uh, squats again, or Rackle. Rackles are a good choice. What about uh, Imperium? Imperium put out like a mutants, beast men type of army. Um, more like a supplement, I think, because like you could use them in Space Marines, uh, Rogue Trader armies, uh, Astro Militarum stuff. I agree 100%. Mutant army would sounds badass. Um, and then Chaos, hmm. Dark Mechanicum all yeah, day. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, GW is kind of doing that when they're putting out a whole bunch of like demon engine and like um warpsmith type models out so they're kind of doing it but just bring out a full full full-on dark mechanicus army right next question oh this one's by the bible man theoretically speaking if all sentient beings in the universe just fall into a dreamless hibernation for a year or two what will happen to the chaos gods and the warp in general (laughs) they've got a freaking buffet in front of them if all sentient life just stopped like doing what they do they're still alive and like the powers and emotions are still there feeding um the warp and like chaos and they're just gonna have a heyday they can do whatever they want for that year or two because just because you stop believing in chaos doesn't mean it stops getting power it still has the beliefs from all those years and you also got to remember the warp doesn't work linearly since there's like time travel and all that stuff going on. So you can stop believing in chaos and nothing's going to happen to them. They'll still be there. Yeah. If anything, they'll just get agitated. Mm-hmm. Next question comes from Neo Prince Lu. What is the name of the song you play at the end of the episodes that say, I never knew I never had so much to lose? Typed in the lyrics, but I can't find it. The link to the to that song, is, ooh, excuse me. The link to that song is down in the description below. Um, it's 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 a SoundCloud link, and it's by a DJ by the name of Municipal Vice. Um, he's actually a friend, so go give him some love. Share that Slaneshi joy. Yes. This one's by the Kangaroo Boxer. Are you guys handsome and adorable? <laughs> yeah, kinda. Are you guys cool? I love the content you guys make and the attitudes you bring to it. Cheers. It wasn't really a question because you answered it. But thank you. That Those types of comments really help us out, especially because of all the trolls that exist um, that are constantly saying that me and the Sound Alchemist are uh, villains <laughs> and, <laughs> and that we uh, were, were bad for the, for the world. But Little I mean, do they know. Look at Syndrome, though. Exactly. Syndrome is my favorite, like, Pixar slash Disney villain. He was the hero to most people. Next, now I'm a villain. Yeah, <laughs> next question comes from M. What are those hounds, or are those hounds to keep the Inquisitors from the Ordo Xenos out? Uh, yeah, so, so, so the hounds that you heard... Um, yes, they are the coronet. What are they called? Are they just demon hounds? They're bloodhounds. Yeah, they're bloodhounds. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, they could have like gave them something else. The bloodhounds, because there's an actual dog breed. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's kind of funny. Uh, next question. This will be the last question. Mm-hmm. You got a good one, because I don't. Nope. I never do. This is by Bible Man. <laughs> I think I did that one already. Oh. Uh, future Scape. Which loyal Primarch is going to come back as a traitor? That's a good question. Oh, that's going to be a long one. <laughs> uh, out of all the loyalist Primarchs, I think the one that everybody expects is the lion. So mm-hmm. I don't think he would come back as a traitor. Yeah. Uh, I think that more than likely... Who would I think the most tragic one would be the Salamanders Vulcan, Vulcan. coming back as a as a villain, uh, almost to the point where I think people would rage, uh, because Vulcan is supposed to be like this mm-hmm. badass, and he's a perpetual too. So yeah. him being like a demon prince that already kind of grants him perpetualness. Yeah. Um, so I think it'd be really awesome if sorry, but if Dorne came back as like chaos tainted. 
Because the last time we saw him, he was fighting chaos. And, like, the only thing that was left was his arm. And, like... Maybe when he got taken into, like, the warp or whatever happened to him, he's just been bombarded with, like, chaos propaganda and brainwashing. And next thing you know, he comes back with, like, if he falls to Nurgle with, like, a tentacled arm or something like that. That'd be scary. I think, I would hope that whatever Loyalist Primarch turns to chaos, though, would be chaos undivided. Um, yeah, it yeah. would have to be, because, like, you've already got all the four chaos gods accounted for. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, those are the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, comment down below. Thank you guys so much for everything. Don't forget, we have a Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos for you guys. Uh, yeah. Hit up the Facebook page if you want a little bit more content here and there. Uh, we've got images of our armies on there. Um, we talk about D&D &D from time to time as well. And, uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. This is the Sound Alchemist. Curse one. And we are out of here. <laughs>